What? <laughs> <laughs> Today we're talking about cassettes and why Gil gave up on them. We're talking hard rock and we're talking whiskey. All that and more coming up next. Hi, my name is Frank. And I'm Gil. And you are watching Sundays on Channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. If you haven't subscribed yet, click this button in front of Gil so you never miss another episode again. So, dear 33ers, this is my friend Gil. Hi. Who is visiting me and my family along with his family from the uh, city of Regina, Saskatchewan. That's right. The city that rhymes with fun. The city that rhymes with fun. Every time I say Regina on this channel, I get some comments saying, Frank, that kind of sounds like uh Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Gil's brought some stuff uh, he wants to share and he's also confessed something to me. Gil tells me he's uh, giving up on cassettes. I want to learn more about that coming up right after this. Alright, thank you for sticking around. I think Gil has something he wants to show you guys. Yeah, I wanted to, you're a fan of the uh, the whiskeys and so forth. And I am. I just wanted to uh, share with you uh, uh, something from my hometown. Well, not my hometown, but about a small town by the name Lumsden. Um, and this isn't promoted by them or anything. I got no money for this. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to bring uh, Frank a bottle of... Uh, Last Mountain Canadian Whiskey, a brewed here in uh, by Lumsden, by where I live, and uh, it's a it's Saskatchewan's first micro distillery, and uh, I thought it was uh, I thought it was pretty good, and I thought you being a whiskey person, yeah, you would enjoy it. I do, and well, no one, I don't think has given me whiskey as part of these Channel Thirty Three European videos before, so I absolutely love it, Gil. Ah, no, thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Yeah. Cheers. Gil has brought over what I, I think is some cassettes. Yes. yes. Why have you brought me cassettes? What's the story here? A little while back, I ended up uh, going into a Salvation Army, and I used to have cassettes on that. And I mean, back in the day, uh, before the days of MP3s and that, and you, everybody were everybody had um, records or, or, or cassettes, or you had those dual tape decks right. and that. And high speed to, dubbing. High speed dubbing, yeah. yeah or uh, or a lot of people were, if they were into more independent uh, metal things, that everybody would be doing tape sharing and that kind of thing. So, I, I mean, that was part of the reason why I liked cassettes and being able to have the mixtape. So I was a big fan of that. So, but seeing this tape deck, I was like, oh, yeah, Frank, he has a tape deck. I'm, so I bought this tape deck at yeah. uh, Salvation Army, and it was the actual like, like component stereo. Yeah, yeah, component stereo, and it was like ten dollars. It, it was so I was like, oh, okay, great. So then I was like, I kind of got on this little run of like buying cassettes again at at, at some stores, and then I'd be picking them up at uh, Value Village or or Salvation Army, that that kind of a thing. But then I've been finding after I've been buying some of these and 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 collecting them, building up, I just. I realized I wasn't listening to them as much, and, and it wasn't. I wasn't getting the nostalgic feel as I was, you know, when I originally had them. Right. And I always just kind of thought, well, I still I, I listen to CDs was too much, and I have so many CDs. I kind of thought, I, I, I'll see if. if Frank wants these. So what you're <laughs> telling us is you've given up completely. I've on cassettes. Given up? Well, not 100%. Okay. Uh, I would say I've given up ca about 95%. So you, you kind of saw this, like the tape and you, the cassettes, and yeah. you thought maybe I'll get back into this. Yes. And then you experienced it, you're like, nah. No, <laughs> no, not going there again. No, no, no. it was just, it, wa it wasn't for me. Um, it was the, I just kind of thought it was a little, the, the muddiness was, the only thing I really enjoyed was just that, those, that first five seconds at the beginning of the cassette, which yeah. I think it only, Canadians experience. That's, I didn't realize this. Nowhere yeah. else in the world, but yeah. in Canada, yeah. that the cassettes have this tone at the beginning yeah. of them. It's like, uh, do, 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 Yes. Yeah. Maybe you have an audio clip. You can throw that in there. <laughs> it's not hitting a nostalgic feeling for me no. because I never really had the, the nostalgia for cassettes probably like you did. Um, like with, uh, I always just had records, and even when I was younger and bought records, and I hated cassettes. Really? I shouldn't say I, I hated factory cassettes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. liked taking records and taping onto cassettes, but uh, I didn't like the the fact, oh, you know, the fast forwarding, the rewinding, the, that kind of thing, the or eating the, at the cassette, the and, e the... and and that's probably part of the reason is because I don't know how many times 
my cassettes got eaten yeah. by that or you know having to you know get out the old pencil and kind of fix it or get oh screwdrivers and fixing that yeah, or worse yeah. the scotch tape yes exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> taping it together and so i i've uh I, i've it was just and then also another thing that annoyed me about cassettes is uh, my the the batteries in the Walkman never seem to last. Oh, that was <laughs> you're right on the on the bus on the way to school. It's like yeah. I'm not quite right there and the batteries are dead. And yeah. what am I gonna listen to on the way home now? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, but um, so uh, and I'm I'm gonna admit I'm I'm just a fan and I know that's it's not a big thing right now for people. But uh, in ten years, uh, I'm a fan of the CDs and I'm oh yeah, stick CDs. I I almost guarantee. If not in 10 years, then in 15, there will be a CD revival. Mm -hmm. For sure there will. And people say, no, that's never going to happen. But nostalgia is such a powerful force oh, that definitely. it's inevitable. Yeah. It's yeah. Inev I mean, if people are collecting cassettes now, CDs are 10 times superior to the cassette in terms yeah. of sound quality. Oh, totally. Yeah. There's going to be a revival. But uh, I think CDs are just getting such a bad, a bad rap right now, and it mainly it had nothing to do with even the CDs. It was just that whole, the whole loudness wars. Oh yeah. And that's that's just what has wrecked it. And of course, everybody automatically just thinks, oh, CDs are digital. Oh, they're gonna sound like those MP3s. Ah, I don't like them. But yeah, I totally we can agree. Go it's into a, that whole role. It's a two pronged thing, right? It's a yeah. two pronged thing. It's the loudness wars, and then it's the digital. Digital is a swear word. Huh? But there's a huge difference between an MP3 and a really nicely recorded and produced and huge. mastered and, and CD. Yeah, huge, hugely different. Yeah. And I've and I I have MP3s and I enjoy listening to MP3s. But if it's something that I get on MP3. I'm still going to, if I really like it, or if I find it on uh, vinyl or find it on CD, I'm always, yeah. I'm still going to buy the album. Yeah, that's that's just the way it is. But I think what bugs me now is that streaming is so popular that now even bands are not even, you know, you can. That's the only way you can get it. Yeah, is on streaming or as an MP3. Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some, I think this is a trend. And it's going to become more and more of a thing yeah. where there's no physical release. Yeah, no, I don't. And that's what bought. That's yeah. what scares me. Like yeah. for example, I'm a huge Wax Mannequin fan. He just made a, a single release right now. It's only on Spotify. Yeah, that's it. And there's no other way to listen. No, there's lots of other ones. Like, recently, I talked about the new release from Phil X. Yes, that's right. And you're it's good. a yeah. great album, fantastic. But I couldn't buy it if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So we've come a long way to say that Gil is yeah. giving up my cassettes <laughs> and, and donating some to me. It's time for a Channel 33 RPM cassette break. Cassette break. Cassette break. In the uh, whoa. Oh, so I mean, like since I was, uh, I was thinking I was going to make uh, 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 various compilations again and I just never did but uh, and I got some blanks and it was actually kind of good that I found a couple of <sighs> this was the these were the the main grails of yes the younger sets. viewers are not going to understand yeah. Gil the significance of the type 2 no cassettes yeah or, or even the, uh, the the metal cassettes. Is this a metal one? No, 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 no. The metal ones. The I was metal don't. Ones I preferred the chrome, and I'll tell you why. The oh. metal were good for the first recording, but if you try to, in my experience, you erase what was on there. I always heard phantom noises for some reason. Did you ever experience that? No, no, I know. Well, but the thing is, is that I never really bought many metal because they were so they were. much more expensive. They were like four dollars compared to the exactly. two dollars and fifty cents. Well, exactly. And too. I didn't notice that much of a difference. You know, I didn't maybe have a high quality enough tape deck to to really notice the difference. But I mean, but I these even, the these metal. shouldn't even exist. Like normal, oh, the normal bias shouldn't even exist. The the cassette. Comeback is not going to happen unless if they start selling these again. And apparently, my understanding is the world supply of Chrome cassettes is almost done. And once it's oh. done, it's done. Oh, well, then there you go. I, I still th always thought that recording a record onto a Chrome cassette was better than a factory. Oh, by, always by, by Country Mile. Yeah. Yeah. And back in the day, that's what we would do. We'd buy the vinyl, the record, record a cassette, and use a cassette in your Walkman yeah. or in your car. Yeah, exactly. Or if, and since money was limited, our big thing was is that oh hey my buddy bought this album, well I'll buy this album oh, the, and then we'll we'll trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> we'll of course, record, of yeah, course. That, that was the, that was the beauty collections. of growing up in the eighties. Yes, yes, and that was the way we had to do it. Uh, these ones were were big ones for me. Were Aussie. Which ones are those? Uh, these two right here. Oh is, my uh, God! Speak of the devil. 
and bark at the moon. This was actually my introduction to a lot of these Black Sabbath songs. And the oh. first time I heard Paranoid was not the Black Sabbath version, but it was the Speak of the Devil version. Really? Yep. I knew it was Black Sabbath, but that's the first one I heard. I didn't, I never found any of the cassettes again of like uh, some of the ones I was hoping for, but I did find Holy Diver on cassette, which is, to me, I've always been a huge uh, Ronnie James Dio. Oh, he had the voice. He, yeah, he is, to me, he's the, he is heavy metal. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah I, th I, I think he is the voice of heavy metal, in my opinion. He's the number one. Yeah. Uh, I, do I disagree with you? I, I won't disagree with you, but uh, I'm not sure if I can agree. He's one of many voices of heavy metal. Yes. Like, to me, the voice of heavy metal was Rob Halford. Oh, see, yes. Oh, that's good, too. That, and yeah, and the thing is, that Robert Halford, oh, now you're making me sing. <laughs> Next cassette. Hold Lisa. on a second. Is that a painkiller on cassette? I've never seen painkiller on cassette. Well, I haven't either, honestly. But uh, this, this actually, this, uh, this one came when I was at a garage sale. I grabbed some. This one was in a bunch with the garage sale. Really? Yes. Painkiller. I was in grade 12, I think. What was your first impression when you heard it? It blew my mind. I honestly thought when Painkiller came out, I thought uh, Judas Priest was hitting another. I thought they were hitting another plateau. I thought totally. they were, like, they were, they yep. were coming in and just like, oh my God, this it was is like Priest, Priest. 3.0. Exactly. Or 4.0, whatever yeah. it was at that point. Yeah, yeah. I kind of thought, oh, this is. This is like, yeah, no, it, it's, and the, it is a fantastic album. I don't know if it. I really don't know if it gets the respect it deserves. But I remember putting it on, and then just the way it started with that painkiller and the drum introduction by Scott Travis. I was like, yeah. oh my god! Doing that as the very first song on the album yeah. is is paved the way for the whole album. It was like a statement. Exactly. It was a statement yeah. of what this album is. And I think that it, it grabbed your attention. You're like, yeah. going, oh my god, this, yeah. this is it, this is it. My one complaint about this <clears throat> album, though, a lot of the lyrics are so silly. Like, See, here comes the metal meltdown, like, oh my god. I'm gonna have to be on the opposite side of that, yeah. because I was never, I never really listened to lyrics. And, and I think the reason was, is because I grew up, uh, my, my father played a lot of German music. In fact, yeah. that's all he played was German music. So, and do you speak German? My, no. Hey, what else you got in there? Well, we're here, I have uh, Paul Stanley. Um, 1978. I, yeah, now I never had this on cassette when I was a kid, but I kind of thought when I was getting back into cassettes, yep. I kind of thought, oh, this might be a neat, cheap way to, to get the, the four solo albums, because I always enjoyed the four solo albums, but I've never actually owned all four. I've always heard them, and I've only, the only two I've ever owned were Ace Frehley and, and uh, Gene Simmons. Right. And uh, but I, I never really knew the Paul Stanley one that much, so that's why I kind of got the, the the cassette of the Paul Stanley one. If we're honest with ourselves, none, none of the, none of those Kiss solo albums were ten on tens. No, Ace's, in my opinion, was the closest. Um, Paul's is good though. Let's do a couple more of these. Uh, this one I got on cassette because this reminded me of my sister because my sister was huge into uh into the metal scene into the the hair metal scene yep and this album she played over and over and over and well and this was so. such a departure too went from shout out the devil where these oh, guys are like too. where you guys are like mad max fire and satan all of a sudden they're wearing pink yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> i want to talk about this cassette right here because ah. people do not appreciate it and you know what I have this. Yeah, I haven't listened to it yet. Oh, Gil. So I, I, I don't appreciate it either. He's talking about Def Leppard slang. In case you can't make it out, that's the first album of Vivian Campbell. I don't know what year, 1996. Yeah, yeah. And Vivian Campbell is still playing with them to this day. Because yes. I went and when I went and saw, I did see Def, Def Leppard, Leppard a couple months ago. Yeah, and it was amazing. They were great. They're fantastic. They are. Yeah. And this album. And they were being experimental, they are kind of breaking out of their shell, and they were trying something different. I thought it really worked, but no one else in the world liked this album whatsoever. 
<laughs> so they shelved the whole idea of trying to be something different. Is there anything in here that, that jumps out at you? I grabbed this one mainly because I was looking for uh, Lee Aaron. <laughs> but then well, they're both I, 80s uh, exactly. rocker chicks. Yep. So, but I was actually looking for Lee Aaron. And then I was just, I came across this one. I was like, oh, hey, Lita Ford. So this is Lita Ford Lita. This is her breakthrough album. Yes. Yes. This kiss was, me once, this kiss me twice. Kiss, yeah, Kiss Me Deadly yeah. is, is the big one on this one. So, um, yeah. I, I, other than that, I, I, I think it was just that whole. I think maybe maybe that's why I stopped listening because that's because I was going you know I don't really want to get into the uh, to the hair metal stuff. Yeah, <laughs> hair metal is scaring you away. Yeah, exactly. I got a, I'm a, I was a punk kid. I yeah, gotta, I gotta stay in the punk. But you didn't get the Lita Ford cassette. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so all these cassettes, they're for you. Thank you, my friend. I am blown away. Like, look at this priest. Like, nonstop classics here. I'm be rocking these in, these in the garage for a long time to yeah. come. Yeah, especially the 12 inches of snow. <laughs> I thought we were done the video, but we're not, because I I have something for Gil. I got something for you. I had one of these. I know you like it. I've only seen it once in the wild before, and by some weird whatever, I found a second one in the wild, and I'm giving it to you. What? <laughs> I can't yeah! believe I found a second one of them. <laughs> By total coincidence. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> the Fonz. Fonzie's favorite. Yes, I've shown this before. It's oh. it's the Fonz, and I was so excited when I found one. I'd never seen one before. And two weeks fun. later, I found a second copy of this. <laughs> the best stuff on here is the last three tracks. It is, the Fonzie <laughs> impersonator. That is so bad that it is so good. <laughs> And I got one more for you, and I gotta tell you, I've talked about this album on this channel before, and I've had like 20 people saying they want this, but you're getting it. Uh oh. <gasps> no way! Cretans at Woodstock! Yes. That is fantastic, and this... because I wanted to hear this because I was always upset that they were not on the actual... If They weren't on the oh, weren't This is the, the first time the entire Woodstock set is available. Oh, and I just lucked out where I got two copies and they showed it in a Friday video and I got a bunch of comments saying give it to me Give it to me, but uh, I want to give it to you Thanks, man. That, You're welcome That is awesome. All right 33 ers Let us know what you thought of today's episode in the comments below. Are you giving up like cassettes like this guy? Yeah. Maybe you are maybe you aren't we would love to know let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, let us know what you think of some of these tapes in this video, this extended episode of uh, Channel 33 RPM. Otherwise, Gil, I want to thank you tremendously for coming on today's episode. Oh, I loved it. It was awesome. I it's hope great. you can do it again at some point. Yeah. Until then, dear 33ers, keep on spinning. Hey. <laughs>